You know, I don't want to, uh, I, I just don't want to overreact, but I don't want to underreact, but I feel very much as though we need to like mark November 14th, 2021 on the calendar as like the day the, is it possible that this is, that's the day the new Patriots dynasty started? Yeah, I, no I kidding. Mean, Jeez. I, I don't want to overreact. I know we'll talk about it later on, but I, I was, it, it, I was texting my little brother. I was texting people. I was like, Oh no, God, no, please, please. No. Why? Why? Like Mac Jones started making foes on the field defense playing lights out. I just, I, I, that game was shocking to me how much of an ass whooping it was. I, and I, I don't want to like, I'm just, I feel like I'm traumatized. I feel like, you know, I have, like we don't know, deserve this. Yeah, you know? like I'm a football fan with like PTSD of like Patriots flashbacks. I'm like no, no, yeah. no, no more. And it's just painful. It's painful. If you're a boss, if you're a, if you're a Patriots fan, you're a boss this morning. You just got to be grinning ear to ear right now and and love. Oh sure, it. absolutely loving it. I am. I, it, you know, Cam Newton was the one who yelled, "I'm back" yesterday. I feel like if Bill Belichick should have yelled at the camera, I'm back as well. That was just something else, man. And it, it, it's giving me like the heebie-jeebies, give me the nightmares. Think about having to deal with the Patriots again for the next God knows how many years. Yeah, Bill Belichick channeling his inner Kirk Cousins with the, you like that? You did. After the game. I mean, <laughs> seriously, no, that was that was impressive. Yeah. I mean, we'll get to the actual game uh, coming up here in just a little bit, but it was like a um, an awakening moment for a oh. quarterback that was the last taken of the group in the first, you know, first round. And the guy that everyone's like, all right, let's not overreact. It's, it is impressive, and it goes to show, too, that the Patriots are consistent with what they do. They find they don't necessarily go after the best guys uh, in terms of athletes or talent. They go for the people that fit with them the best, and that's yeah. what everyone said. I mean, Mac Jones fit the, the New England Patriots the best out of anyone else, and we're already seeing the fruits of that. Um, it's still yet to be seen whether or not that he's kind of already reached his ceiling, but – if that was the ceiling yesterday, then what they did against a, you know, what we all, uh, you know, claim claims to be a really good defense. What we all think is a good defense uh, that yeah, it was impressive. So, yeah, I mean, I don't want to, I, I I'll ask you this question. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's wrong to think that if the Patriots could have gotten Trevor Lawrence, they would have taken Trevor Lawrence over Mac. Yeah. Jones. Yeah. I'm not sitting here. I don't want to go revisionist history too much with that. But I mean, but, really, but the Justin Fields or the Trey Lance may not work as well in New England. No, it's true. And they could have traded up for a Zach Wilson for, you know, they, they, they had all the picks in the world. I will say though, it's just one of those, like, I, I just like my brain now having to, rem- to have to like reprogram back to like, God damn it. The Patriots are good again. Yeah, and yeah. like, not just being like, you know, last year, I, I mean, I don't like necessarily root against any team that's not green Bay. But it was kind of fun to see New England struggle last year and wonder as Tom and the Bucks going to win the Super Bowl. But now it's just like you imagine having a you know watching a Chiefs at Patriots in the you know in the in a wild card game and the Patriots just you know methodically marching down the field winning games the playoffs right now that's giving me a headache like that's just giving me a it'd headache. be brutal I'd say, I don't uh, know it's. Um... Gosh, I mean, the guy might coach till he's 98, so we're not we, – we may be in for the long haul with Bill Belichick, too. I mean, Why it doesn't stop? Seem, Why stop? Yeah, I mean, if it's working and if they get to the playoffs this year, let alone uh, what if they win the division, um, then then we got some real problems. So uh, w- welcome back, everybody, here to the Football Lounge. Week 10 is almost in the books. We've got that Monday night game coming up later tonight. We'll talk about that at the very end of the show right after we get our Super Bowl playing update from Mark, since we uh, we didn't get that last week, kind of a hybrid show we did last week. As you all remember, Mark downed six of those Carolina Reaper wings. Oof. He is all better now. Mark, you're feeling good and up I to am. speed. Yeah, you know what? I, I've been saying it all weekend to people who ask me about it. And I, a, lot of, a lot of comments about it is uh, the ranch. If you wouldn't have let me, if we didn't agree 
when we made the bet to allow ranch or blue cheese or whatever your choice of dipping sauce, there would have been a lot more pain. Also, if I would, if I had to record at Buffalo Wild Wings and they give them to like hot, I mean, I did, yeah, I did like order them, pick them up, drive them, you know, to 15 minutes to the studio, get them in. And, you know, so they were, they weren't as hot, like temperature wise. So I think those things saved me a little bit. And uh, there may be a God at that point in time. I also feel like there is a, if there is a God, he's very mean for the Lions Steelers game. I was tweeting about that. We had to watch um, that mess. Dear that Lord. was just about, that was, yeah. That was like watching Maction. It really was. It was like you might as well be putting like Toledo versus Central Michigan in that game. I mean, that was it was Maction at the end there. It was crazy. Uh, but it was it went not too bad. I, I'm feeling feeling good, ready to go today, and uh, we got a, a a big slate of games to get to. Yeah, well, food for thought next time we do a hot wings challenge. Uh, no ranch allowed next time. So yeah, I, I think it, extra pain. It's extra pain. Look forward to that. <laughs> um, nothing really major to get into in terms of league news, but I will outline some of the injuries that were sustained. I'm not yeah, sure I can keep news. up with, I, I, I don't have a comprehensive list for you all. There were, uh, there were quite a few injuries, uh, this past week, unfortunately. Um, but we had Aaron Jones go down for the green Bay Packers, uh, with a knee injury. He may be out for an extended time. We had Baker Mayfield, with a knee injury to compound on his already injured shoulder. Yeah. He went out of the game. He may be out um, for some extended time. TJ Watt went down with a knee and hip injury in that game. He's going to be out probably for an extended period of time, but uh, the x-rays did come back today negative. So that's good. Very good news. Huge they news. may only miss him for like a, a week or so. Ben Roethlisberger, by the way, wasn't in that game. Uh, of course, as he was put on the COVID list, He's uh, possible to return this week against the Chargers, but we're not totally sure on that front. Um, Joey Bosa, I think, was injured as well, and Keenan Allen. Um, but uh, and I think they're questionable right now, as it as it turns out. Um, but yeah, we're we've got uh, probably a few more that I missed. The biggest uh, one I is Chase Young. Oh, they Chase Young, my today. goodness. How could I forget yeah. Chase Young? Obviously. No, Chase Young confirmed today, torn ACL. ACL, yep. Out until probably early next year. And that, Which and is that brutal because that was the first game that we actually saw the Washington football team look yeah, like the Washington like, no. football team. You know, that yeah. defense was finally doing well. He was having a down season, Chase Young, and, you know, brutal for him to go down with that ACL. He's going to be out, like you said, for an extended period of time for the rest of the season. And uh, we obviously had, we had the Robert Woods injury. Um what was well, Saturday it was announced, but really it happened Friday uh, during practice, but he, it was weird. He practiced Mark and then they, you know, went off with like an injury and then came back to practice. He practiced again. And then after practice, you know, walked around, talked to the media, acted like nothing yeah. was a problem. And then all of a sudden we had an ACL thing. That's kind of crazy. I mean, you, you don't want to speculate too much. We don't know the details of it, but if, if he was dealing with like a lingering injury and just didn't say anything and then went out and practiced further, you know, that, I mean, that could be a, a big problem. I, you know, the Rams may be a little bit disappointed, but nonetheless, you know, how lucky are they that they made the deal with OBJ uh, j the same day and, uh, and Robert Woods goes down. They really need OBJ now more than ever. It almost seems as though the Rams were trying to like, like the Rams may have said to Robert Woods, like, we need to keep this completely under wraps because this will give OBJ leverage. Like, it, I mean, like there could be like, I, it's all I kept thinking Yeah, but they wouldn't have let him head. practice though the day no, of the well, deal, right? Like, no, I mean, it's true. I, it's a weird, it's a weird situation. And uh, either way, you're absolutely right. Massive for the Rams though. OBJ, I, I mean, he's now going to be a, a huge part of the offense. It, this makes it even Fast. better for OBJ. I, I said on my show on Saturday, if you're OBJ, I like this move a lot, mainly because OBJ is in that portion of his career right now. This is a, he's not looking to sign with the Rams for the next five years. He's looking to sign with the Rams for 10 games, playoff run, show that he could buy into a system, show that he could be a good teammate again, show that he could still be productive, and then hopefully get a three year, you know, $45 million deal somewhere else. That's what OBJ is at. That's where he's at in his career. So this or is a with rehab. Them. You know, I well, could see they, him wanting maybe, to get that long-term deal in LA and stay there. 
Maybe, but it's a rehab deal. And if you're going to do yeah. a rehab deal, you want to do it with a team that has a good culture, a team that uh, is an easy fit for you to fit into. You could also put up stats in a rehab deal, and he's going to put up stats in that offense. Uh, and he's going to be playing in meaningful games. So those are all the t- those checked all the boxes. The Packers did as well, but as we saw, Snowy and Lambo, uh, and and uh, you know it, OBJ. If you're OBJ, I mean, I think to myself, if I'm a free agent in the market for whatever job I do, versus moving to a completely new place, versus a place where I already have a home, and the money's the same either way, it, it just makes more sense. It makes all the sense in the world. Sure. And uh, it looks like uh, as I'll talk later on in the show, the Super Bowl playing the Rams and the pa- and the Packers could be in a on a collision course for the NFC championship uh, game anyways. Yeah, no, that's, that's very much in play. Um, So we'll, we'll kind of, we'll see, we'll see, you know, one, I don't think he's been ruled out for tonight. They they looked, um, no, I think he's playing. He is. He's for sure playing. That's so Uh, that's what I heard. Okay. All right. Well, very good. We'll see how much he's used. We're, uh, we're betting on how many uh, yards he would have tonight. So, okay. Well, there you go. There you go. I mean, well, I imagine, look, if, if you're the Rams, I mean, I, I would just, throw him out there it, I, I wouldn't put him on a pitch count I mean you yeah just, I agree you just just let the guy go out there he'll figure it out he'll ask questions what route do I need to run on this play and they can yeah. tell him you know he doesn't need to know anything else outside of that and again if so. you're the Rams it's a flyer deal like you know it, it's a you know you don't want him to get hurt but again you're using him to help you win a championship he's using you to help Reese bolster his image and his stats and so he can get a new deal somewhere it's a win-win Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's get to the recap of Week Ten, Mark, and we'll just start with that absolute shit show in Heinz at Heinz Field. Yeah, um, why not? All right, uh, Steelers Lions end in the tie, sixteen sixteen. Um, the the recap of the game is that it was really sloppy. No one played well throughout the entire game. It was back and forth. Mason Rudolph ended up throwing fifty passes. Um, Thirty of fifty. Not ideal. Not ideal. Not, not what you want your backup quarterback uh, to be doing. They couldn't run the ball very effectively in this one. It was an ap- a torrential downpour for a good portion of the game. Uh, sloppy play all around. I think in the third quarter, Mark, Jared Goff still had not thrown a pass beyond the line of scrimmage, which is just unbelievable. It <laughs> is. They ran the football with DeAndre Swift. They did screens all day. Um, but it ends in a 16, 16 tie. And in overtime, neither team wanted to win apparently because they both went back and forth, giving each other the football, Uh, your thoughts on this mess. I mean, I, I I may be a little biased. Was that one of the worst games you've ever seen? I, it may very well be uh, at the Uh, top of the list or towards there. It's certainly up there in recent memory for sure. I'll, I'll say this. I, I thought the lions had momentum, it it better momentum at portions of time in overtime and they just really couldn't get anything going. And I, and I will say that the T the thing to me that was very interesting about this game was that as soon as Pittsburgh announced big Ben being out, there was a big line shift. I mean, people then started assuming the lions are going to blow out this, uh, you know, or win the game, not blow out the Steelers, but you know, the the line started shifting in Vegas. I, I think the P- Pittsburgh was still favored by the time the game started, but I mean, it went from, you know, plus 400 something for the Lions to win to, you know, to plus like one, 115, 105. I mean, it was yeah. then much tighter. And so Vegas is telling you they see the Steelers still overall home field as a better roster. And I think we would totally agree to that, even with a Mason Rudolph, who I don't think Mason Rudolph has a, much of a job once Pittsburgh eventually lets him go. I don't think he, his career in the NFL is like, is a, is a, you know, he maybe gets a third string job or, you know, bounces around and is one of those guys, but he just hasn't uh, panned out at all to be what maybe the Steelers had hoped he would be. Uh, Certainly what he hoped he could be in the NFL. But I think that the thing, the main thing I want to focus on is I thought Dan, you know, Dan Campbell took over the play calling uh, for this game. And I think Dan Campbell showed his hand pretty early on. It's bad weather. I don't trust my quarterback. We're going to run the ball a billion times and I'd rather lose that way than lose with Jared Goff throwing three interceptions. And you know what? I give him a ton of credit for that. How many times have I said on this show and and other things, if you're not a good football team, why are you throwing the ball 50 bleeping times? Like you're only doing yourself more of a disservice, shorten the game, run the ball. You will undoubtedly keep the game closer 
if you just play that type of football. I know it's ugly. I know it's not pretty, but you're rebuilding. No one's expecting you to win. And uh, Jared Goff, you don't owe him anything. If they, he, You're obviously not going to bench him. You got to roll out the season with him. But if you don't trust him at this point in time, then do what you did. Run the ball a bunch of times. So I thought, I, I, I thought it was a good game plan from the Lions that way. But then it's just way too sloppy. The Lions deserve to win that game. I thought they played better down the stretch. Uh, and it, it, in moments, you know, the, the turnovers got crazy in overtime. And I, I'm a firm believer if you're a home team and you're and you're in overtime, then you should have lost that game anyways. You're you're you didn't play well enough to win that game. Uh, and you know, listen, but for the Steelers, I'll take your, your thought on this really quickly. A tie is not as bad as a loss. It really isn't. We've seen it recent history. These ties do mean something in those playoff standings, especially when you're looking for those wild card spots. Yeah, it's it's true that in in the you know global sense of it, it's obviously not a loss. Uh, it's a tie, uh, and and that can help uh, with the standings by the end of the season. But it still very much felt like a loss um, when you're playing the winless Lions. You had your your opportunities. You shot yourself in the foot. Penalties were terrible. Um, you know, we saw we saw bad refereeing again. But that's going to be the case the rest of the year. I, I don't think anyone's going to be surprised. It's been terrible all season long. It's been terrible for yep. the past couple of years. It, it's just not going to get better. So um, at this point, you can't really use it as a crutch. It is what it is, and you got to find a way to elevate beyond it. Um, Deontay fumbled on a key play uh, that would have essentially sealed the game. Uh, Pat Fryermuth at the very last play of the game. Uh, fumbles he's been good so far and he's that's been it he's been great I, and and i'm not gonna it's not an indictment on him he's great and he's gonna be he's their guy now for the next decade it's he, he's clear he's their next heath miller they finally found him um but the the issue i had with that play is it's the end of the game you're staring down what i think it was a 55 yard field goal at the time 15 seconds left and you decide to run uh, a quick out in the flat to your tight end to get two extra yards for boswell Boswell's been dynamite for 50 plus yards this year. He's been probably the best kicker in the league next to Justin Tucker. And to risk so much uh, for two extra yards is just absurd to me. And, and obviously, you know, Fryermuth can't fumble in that situation, but even if he didn't, he was tackled in bounds. They're going to have to rush uh, or uh, rush themselves to the line of scrimmage, hope to get a spike off in time. It's just too much in play there. But I will say I, Personally, I just I don't think either team deserved to win that game. I think it ended exactly how it should have ended because of just how both teams shot themselves in the foot. Lions were working with a backup kicker. He missed a 44 yarder to yep. win it in overtime. Uh, nobody, nobody. It just seemed like nobody wanted to win that game, and that's just how it ended. Um, I'm not going to read too much into it. Everyone's had some stinkers. Um, for the Steelers, we talked all year long. The only way they can win is a close game like this and then win by a field goal or something like that. Uh, they're going to play the Lions this way, and they'll probably, they could probably play the Chiefs this way or the Bucks this way. It's just how just it how works. they play. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't want to read too much into it. It's not the most devastating loss of all time. It sucks. It's not good. They could have taken um, first place in the AFC North with a win, and instead they, they get a tie, and now they're, you know, we don't know if Ben's going to be back this week or not. He may. You have TJ Watt questionable. I just, Is Ben you know, vaccinated? He's vaccinated, so he has to get two consecutive COVID tests gotcha. um, to be able to come back, which, you know, in most cases that's happened. Uh, but you just never know. I mean, he he may not. He may, he may still have it for, you know, a few more days, and that thing's going to linger. Uh, they got the Chargers coming up. Tough game. So you really hope that he can be back for that one. But nonetheless – uh, it is what it is. We saw a lot of stinkers the past two weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, from some really good teams. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. They're five, three and one. And uh, I guess you just move on. Are but, we sure uh, that big Ben got COVID? He, he didn't just want another bye week. He just didn't need like, yeah. oh, the lion. I'm sure. Right. Can I take yeah. this week off? He did off, self report the symptoms too. So that would help, say, help uh, with that know, narrative for sure. A little big Ben, you know, being a big baby. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there's not, I mean, look, uh, that's just, uh, the guys had uh, some ailments this year. So yeah, I probably wanted to err on the side of caution. Good, good for him, I guess. And, uh, and honestly, I don't know if having him in this game really would have changed much, which I, that doesn't, that just tells you kind of no, how I, I feel know. about this team. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean, Maybe. it's, it's all, it's all revisionist history for sure, but it just, 
It, it does. It's what, what you talk about all the time. It's a circle game and they lost a circle. Yeah. They didn't win a circle game. They, that's, that's painful. Yeah. Yeah. I guess payback for like, not, you know, for winning the bears game the week before on some questionable cause they, they get the tie here this week against the lions. Cowboys absolutely destroy the Falcons mark 43 yeah. to three. This was an absolute drubbing. I mean, um, and Dak wasn't even particularly like amazing. It's not like he threw 500 yards, with five touchdowns. He had two touchdowns in this game. You know, it was a good Zeke game, good for CD Lamb. And they just kind of controlled this thing, the defense as well, with several turnovers of Matt Ryan. Uh, they had a defensive touchdown as well. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of things going right for the Dallas Cowboys. Did, did your mindset on their outlook for the rest of the season change at all with this game? Uh, no. Given that the Falcons had a lot of momentum that they built coming into it. No, I, not necessarily because for the, for the Cowboys, they just got back on track to what they were doing. It's like it, it, the buck, the, the Broncos game just looks even more like a hiccup now um, for, for the Falcons. I, I, again, it's just one of those things where the, this Falcons team, I mean, they tr they've tried to change the head co coach now uh, twice since the, uh, you know, it, you know, multiple times, uh, you know, Matt Ryan's had how many head coaches now at this point in time, I don't necessarily, again, blame Matt Ryan. He's not like the issue issue, but this franchise, talking about a franchise, just doesn't have a lot of juice and they don't have a lot going for them positively. And they're kind of stuck in this up and down cycle. And, and defensively, they were an absolute disaster against the Cowboys. The Cowboys are so talented offensively. They can do that to you. Uh, it was a real undressing for the Cowboys. Again, for them, it's a, it's, it's, it's positive to see them get back to what they were doing before just big offensive explosion deck looked healthy. That was the key to me because he did not look that healthy uh, after he missed that Minnesota game. And then they kind of rushed him back for the Broncos game last week. Good to see Dak healthy and playing efficient football in that way, even though it wasn't the Patrick Mahomes five touchdown game. Right. Yeah. And you don't look like it's the circle game and they're seven and two. I mean, to win in this fashion, yeah, that give, gives you guys, you know, some momentum. It's better than beating the Falcons 10 to three or something where, you know, Great. there's so many things you got to fix. Uh, it does look like this offense is going to be, is the real deal. And this is a, a team that's not some sort of fluke just because they're in the NFC East. This is a team that can compete with the best of them. I don't think the Falcons are that bad of a team. And so for them to win in this fashion, uh, you know, it was, it was impressive. And, you know, Tony Pollard had his moments in this game too. They really do have depth on this team and you know even if Zeke were to go down it's not they don't rely on this guy like maybe four yeah. years ago you were like Zeke is this team yeah Zeke is now a, a good piece to this team uh and and I think that's exactly what you want if you're Dallas I mean that's that's how you're going to want this thing to to pan out but to see that from their defense which has been suspect at best uh in the past couple of seasons this defense really could be the difference maker to actually get them over the hump and give them that playoff run that they've been kind of seeking to get back to for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. It's hard to envision Dallas. It's just hard for us in our lifetimes, you know, in our adult lifetimes, Dallas has not been consistently good. I mean, right. the Romo era had a couple good years, but again, kind of roller coastery. It is weird to look at Dallas and say to yourself, I really do see them as a team that could win multiple playoff games and feel really good about that. I mean, especially even since Dak's rookie year, we haven't really felt that about Dallas, but they've earned the right for us to feel that way about them at this point in time in the season. Yeah, no question. And they, they're, they're going to win this NFC East. Uh, that's, that's becoming pretty clear at this point, obviously crazier things have happened, but I, I say that fairly confidently. Um, the Titans, meanwhile, are continuing to, to put their stamp on the AFC South. And uh, and edge the Saints twenty three to twenty it wasn't the, or twenty one twenty three twenty one it wasn't the prettiest of games but look I mean at, at a certain point we got to take the Titans like seriously and 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 call oh. them what they are like a a a legitimate I think a Super Bowl contender because we still haven't seen enough from Tannehill and this passing offense and yet they're still winning games and they're beating good teams in the process. Their defense has gotten better. I understand it's Trevor Simeon. It's not, you know, the fully healthy Saints team that it was yeah. a few weeks ago, but the Saints defense is really good, and, and the Titans did enough to get the win. And they're finding ways to to alleviate the, the pressure of not having Derrick Henry back there. It's not pretty. It's not going to be pretty. 
but the combination of these various guys with Adrian Peterson and McNichols and things like that, you know, maybe just maybe they're going to be able to put themselves in a good position by the time Derrick Henry may be available come the divisional round, you know, at best. Good for the saints for getting back in this game, getting it close and being, yeah, they showed fight. fighting. Um, but again, like I said on the, on the show, the, uh, during the wing show, I don't trust the saints anymore until I, and until I really see as far as winning games and being really competitive for wild card spots and, and winning playoff games at this point in time, until I really see them hitting a stride with that drew Brees offense of the last couple of years. And I, I didn't feel that I got enough of that during this game, but I think a lot of that's credit to the Titans defense. This is a defense that was bad at the beginning of the year and now they're playing really well. So Whatever they've done, I, I'm I'm not the scheme guy to know exactly what's fixed or what what's changed. But they're it's a different defense. The other thing the Titans have going for them, they're the only two lost team in the AFC right now, if I'm not mistaken. And their losses are not to the other perennial powers in the AFC. They dropped that weird game to the Jets. Like they have a loss to teams that aren't going to make the playoffs. So not only are they won up in the loss column, but they have head to head wins over Buffalo, Kansas City. Uh, obviously they're Colts in their own division. So they're in a really pretty spot right now for the one seed. If they can keep rolling, Titans are certainly legit in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're on the fast track to, to the division and, you know, the one seed with how kind of rough it's been for the AFC this last month. Uh, now the Titans are, are showing to be the, you know, the top dog as of right now at eight and two, and um, and and we'll just kind of see how they progress with that uh, again without Derrick Henry. But we haven't seen the best football from the Titans yet, and so that's a little scary. Uh, For sure, see, you see, we haven't seen them at their best. The also, Colts, it's such a bummer that Derrick Henry's not a part of this. It is, yes, absolutely. Like because you, because yeah. he is like it's a lot like um oh crud what why why can't I think of it why it's I just had the analogy and I lost oh the Atlanta Braves with Acuna Jr. Oh, He's right. their best yes. player, yeah. but and but you still want to support the team, but it's weird when the best player is not playing. And they're not better without Acuna Jr. They're not better without Derrick Henry. No one is suggesting that. But it's one of those you're like, man, I you just wish they could be all together, all healthy, um, because it, it would make this run even more special what they're doing right now. Absolutely. Yep. And, and and Carson Wentz with the Eagles on that Super Bowl run too, you know, it's, agreed. You know, yeah, things it's like a that too. Similar feel. Um, we'll stay in the AFC South. The, the Colts uh, at home edge the Jaguars twenty three to seventeen. You know, Carson Wentz doesn't find the end zone in this one, but uh, Jonathan Taylor is a, a signature game beast. for him. He's just a beast. I mean, he dominates. Fun and, to watch uh, run the ball. Yeah, he. Is. I mean, he's just a workhorse, and you could see the writing on the wall of his days at Wisconsin that he was going to last in the NFL just because of his running style and how he had a kind of the complete picture. Um, you know, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the prettiest game. I mean, they went up 17 to six after the first quarter and you thought it was going to be good, but they only score six points the rest of the way. Um, but that being said, you know, the Colts played the type of football that they needed to play to win. They're back at 500 now at five and five. Yeah. I don't see them at this point really contending for the division with the Titans, given how they've been playing and, and now it's a three-game lead for Tennessee. Plus, the um, Tennessee's beaten them both times already this year. Exactly. They've they have the the tiebreaker and the, and the wins over them. The Colts obviously can still compete for that, the wild card spot, and they may very well be in contention for that uh, by season's end. But your initial thoughts on Indy and, and kind of how they've looked uh, as of late, is, is it going to have to be Jonathan Taylor's show for them to get to the playoffs at this point? Because we, well, I think we've seen all we can see from Wentz. Yeah, I'll start with the Jags. I just want to give the Jags a quick shot at, I mean, two weeks ago, you know, three weeks ago, especially, I mean, the Jags were laughing, laughing stock. They get the impressive win over Buffalo. We didn't really get to talk about that a ton. And then for them to play the way they played in this game where they didn't embarrass themselves. I mean, this is a team, and and I know that's like such a low bar, but when <laughs> But it's just yeah, but true. it is I mean, Jacksonville. I mean, that's they, 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 and and Urban Meyer so far, they've had some games with some insane penalties and ridiculous uh, 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 offensive calls and, and blowout losses. So I give them that I do give them their credit for. It looks like this Jacksonville team is growing. It is getting better. 
Uh, so you got to give them credit because whatever Urban Meyer is doing to not have completely lost the locker room, it may be working. I, I still don't know if that means he's a guy and all this stuff. They're going to ever win a Super Bowl, anything like that. But I do want to give a little bit of credit where I think it is due. And then I'll say for the Colts, this, I think the thing for me is right now, the Colts, besides the Patriots, are that team. If you're the, if you're the division winners, you don't want to see Indy in a, in a wild card playoff game right now because they're getting a lot of confidence offensively with Jonathan Taylor. Bad weather playoffs. Jonathan Taylor translates. That Colts defense still has some teeth. They still have some dudes on that defense. Obviously, Leonard being the main one. And uh, you, when you, you can run the ball like that, Carson Wentz is a wild card. I mean, he's had good games. He's had bad games. And he's had games where it's, he, it doesn't matter to him, I don't think, that he's not scoring touchdowns. It, winning football is, is what matters to Carson Wentz right now so he can keep his job. And he's not losing them games right now in, the, in this moment. So Colts are, are positioning themselves to be one of those dangerous teams that they're going to just be in that in the hunt graphic. They're going to be in that wild card graphic because they're not going to compete for the division. It looks like um, because, because of the early season woes, but they're going to be that, maybe that five seed that you do not want to see at, at you know, week one, uh, you know, of the NFL playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. And just to add, I think that they're, I think Carson Wentz is going to be their guy for the next couple of years. I, I don't, I haven't been overly impressed with him. I don't think, I think we've seen the best that we've, that that yeah. is there to be seen from Carson, but they've they're now in a position where it's like what what are they going to do that's better? Where are they going to go? They're not necessarily in the position that the Browns are in to easily move off. Um, I, I just don't kind of see what the plan will be for Indy moving forward. Outside of we're going to have to have Carson as the guy for the next probably two years while yeah. they t- t- try and find the next dude. They would have to be in the veteran sweepstakes to maybe make yeah, a huge like offer Russell for Wilson Russell or, or an Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, there's and there's just not enough quarterback depth coming out of the draft this year that that's exciting. I agree with you. They're in a they're and they're in a better spot than even Carolina was because, and we'll talk about Carolina, I'm sure, coming up in a second, where Wentz is is certainly played way better than than Darnold has this year. And Wentz has lost them some games, but he's won them some games. And it's still early enough to where let's just see how this season plays out. I don't think many Colts fans right now would be too upset knowing that if they make the playoffs and maybe, maybe, you know, maybe they lose in their playoff game, but it's a really competitive game, close game. I don't think many Colts fans would be upset going into a second year with Carson Wentz and, and Frank Reich right now. I wouldn't at this point in time as an Indy fan. Yeah, yeah. Totally agree. All right, let's move on to that Patriots game. We talked about it at the beginning, oh. so we'll we'll probably be fairly quick with this one. But a forty-five to seven win for New England at home over the Browns, who were coming off of a you know a rough week, and you thought you know I personally thought that the Browns were going to come in re-energized. That defensive front was going to get after Mac Jones. Yeah. Instead, it was the opposite. You know, I benched Mac Jones. For Mason Rudolph in my fantasy football team. That's a bad that, move. That was an awful move. Terrible, and I deserve to lose because of it. Um, but Mac Jones scores three touchdowns, almost 200 yards passing. And uh, it was just an efficient day all around for New England. Meanwhile, the Browns muster a single touchdown in the first quarter and never score again. Baker yep. Mayfield gets hurt. Uh, you know, they didn't have Nick Chubb for this one either. But look, I mean, the defense of the Browns, is it just needs to be better. It, it should have been better. Ba- all on paper, this is a Browns defense that should be top 10 in the league. And instead they've looked pedestrian at best. And they, you know, the Patriots now moving to six and four, by the way, while the Browns are now at 500 at five and five. Yeah, I, you know, I'll say this. Let me start with the Patriots again, uh, just because I've talked a lot about them to start the show. I, I mean, it. they are hitting a stride. And it, it, again, but I, I think they are a team that will put pressure on Buffalo now for the division. They're not out of the division yet, like I feel like Indy is. And I think if you're Buffalo, though, it's, it's a good motivating factor. You saw a motivated Buffalo team yesterday, which we'll talk about coming on up here shortly as well. So you see that in the NFL. You see teams... Other teams winning streaks, motivating other teams. Like it, it gets you, it gets you refocused, gets you re-energized. Yeah, and yeah. Um, no, listen, New England, New England being good puts everyone in the league on notice, and they are good right now. They are, they are, they are 
Um, they're not first class good Super Bowl playing, but uh, we'll talk about it at the end of the show. I, I think they're business class good. I, I think they are in a position right now to where it's like they could win one or possibly two playoff games and things go right. A lot of it has to fall on Mac Jones because he's the, I still think he's the, um, if you're looking for the weakness of the team, he's got to be it. Can you confuse him? Can you get after him? Can you put pressure on the kid? Can you ha- make him have to make plays a- improvised? If you can do that and it's tough against a Patriots team that schemes so well, that blocks so well, that it has their offense so meticulously calculated step by step. But if you can do that, that's the way you slow down this New England team right now. They're playing great defense, too. And that has to be said for this Browns team. But I, I'll say this, Dan. We've talked about it now for weeks in a row. Last week was a nice little bounce back, little get up for Baker Mayfield to get his career going back on track, get that, get that big number back on the contract. He's in deep trouble right now. Uh, I, and, and I, and you know, I'm on records being a, a not a big Baker guy, and I would not pay Baker a lot of money. At this point in time, the Browns are realizing as well, when your franchise quarterback is struggling, how how brutal it can be as an organization, even when you have high expectations elsewhere. And they have a lot of money invested in parts all over this roster that aren't Baker Mayfield. They aren't playing well enough. They're not being schemed well enough. That's not Baker Mayfield's fault that the defense played that poorly. I mean, obviously the offense can help the defense by keeping drive alive and putting points on the board, but they're a mess right now. And uh, I, I, I don't want to chew my own horn. I predicted them to miss the playoffs this year. Looks like, uh, you know, that's that trend is uh, feeling good for me right now. So I'll take that little win here at week 10 and, uh, and just uh, move on. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I actually forgot about that last week with uh, Baker and, and beating the Bengals. That, w- that was a big win. I kind of glossed over that. So they were coming off a win and just uh, put up a dud here this week. So we'll, we'll see if they can right this ship. But uh, it's a it's tough sled moving forward. Uh, the Bills go on the road. We don't have to spend a whole lot of time on a few of these matchups here, Mark, because a lot of them were unsurprising. Uh, the Bills get a 45-17 win over the Jets, as expected uh, in this one. Um, any, anything to really take away outside of the bills are good. And, and they're probably going to stay in that conversation. And this is a good lesson of not to take too much into a loss last week against the, you know, the Jaguars and not to put too much stake into, you know, dominant wins as well. It's a refocusing. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. overreact to the loss. Don't overreact to this win, but it's like I said, with, when you just talked about the Patriots winning, this is a refocusing for the bills. I said it on our episode when we recorded eat the wings on Saturday, uh, you know, that we released on Saturday when teams lose like a Baltimore and you're coming off a bad loss, you're a good team and you're going to see refocused efforts. And this bills team now realizes the Patriots are literally breathing down their neck. I think you're going to see a very strong bills team over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I haven't really looked ahead at their schedule, but I feel good about the bills playing pretty much anyone right now um, because they're, they understand what's on the line for them and they lost to a Tennessee team. So again, they're basically like two games back in the standings to a Tennessee team. Yeah. All of that stuff really matters to them in getting that one seed uh, for the, uh, for the jets. I'll just say the best thing for the, 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 the thing, the only person uh, who was happy for in the jets organization yesterday was Zach Wilson. Yeah. Seeing Mike white. Let, come let's out end the hype for, for a second. Yeah. yeah. And to say, you know, yeah. all right, my job, you know, because from what I was hearing, Zach Wilson could have been healthy enough to maybe dress for this game and to play. And they went with Mike White. And their organizations say abundance of caution, Zach's our future, blah, blah, blah. But that's got to feel weird if you're Zach Wilson a little bit. It's got to feel a little maybe even like a shot if you're Zach Wilson. So, uh, you know, that's got to that's got to be a – you never root for your own team's demise. But I think deep down, Zach Wilson may have been feeling pretty good watching what happened to uh, to the Jets, 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 Jets on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. As for the Bills, by the way, they play the Saints, the Patriots, the Bucks, uh, and the Colts in the next four weeks. So the Colts, Saints, Patriots, Bucks. So that, a that row, is a little bit order? of a tough stretch. Uh, yeah, in that order. Man. But then they end the season: Panthers, Patriots, Falcons, Jets. So you know, the end of the season, you could see them getting four, at least three of those final four. The Colts. next four will be telling. So, so what did you, you know, say? Colts, Saints, 
Colts, Saints, and then Patriots, Bucks. Those are two. I don't want to say they're must wins, but those are two. Like those are those yeah. are two yeah. Because games. the Patriots going to be a tough game, and the Bucks is game. in Tampa. Um, you know that that could you be difficult. The thing about it is, you don't want to feel the pressure to have to beat New England, right? And yeah, when exactly. you play, New England. yeah, when you play New England. Yeah. If you have two, if you have because a game, that's when things two, go bad. Yeah, if you have a game or two up on New England, and even if you lose, you're still ahead of them in standings. That's a whole different level of pressure that comes yeah. with going into that game. I I just think that uh, that's it's going to be interesting. That's exciting to it's a little exciting look ahead for the Bills. But I feel good about the Bills in those games. They're better than both those teams. It's got to get it done. Washington wins at home Whoa. against the Bucks. I mean, that's that that was the big Shock. upset, obviously, of the day. Uh, 19 play drive. What was it to end the game? Like a 20, it was, 10 yeah, it minutes. was something like that. I got to double check on, on what the actual length of that was. I was um, watching it live and I couldn't believe it. You just kept waiting for the bucks to get a stop. And then Vita Vea goes down at the end of that drive. It's get carted off the bucks defense. It, it was mean, a 19 play 80 yard drive uh, at the end of the game. And how many the bucks technically minutes. got those two plays, but that, that was it. You know, I mean, Holy smokes. Holy smokes. What a win for Washington. That's one of those where that's Ron Rivera, season, right? I mean, that's why they yeah. brought the guy in there. Your season is lost, but that is a, that is a cultural win that hopefully then you can build it, turn around and you, and you can be like, Hey, we're the team that maybe is going to fall out of the, in the hunt bracket or at the very bottom of the, in the hunt, you know, graphic, but how many teams can we upset? Can we ruin Dallas this season? Can we, you know, that's what you're playing for moments like this. Yep. And, and for Heineke, he, he was really good on that final drive and you got to give him credit uh, because uh, he's had a real rocky season. He the may Bucks, be a starting quarterback for the next four or five years. You know, he, he'll be, he'll uh, be the, the back end. He'll be the bottom five yeah. quarterback, if not the worst starting quarterback. He may be, but he might Teddy. be a guy that sticks around for a little bit. Well, he may be a Teddy where he gets chances yeah. to start. I, I right. don't know. I mean, very interesting situation for sure, but I'll just say this for the bucks. I am not going to overreact to the bucks loss. I will say this though, defensively, that's a nightmare drive. Like that is, yeah. that is, you don't burn the tape or bury the film on that one. No, you know, you watch that you, you get, I hope they're sitting in the film room this morning and every one of that defense has to watch that and should be embarrassed. Like they, they had plenty of opportunities to make plays to stop that drive and give Tom Brady the goat another chance, and they couldn't do it. And if you're Brady, that's got to be maddening. That's got to be the worst thing in the world to see because you are the goat, and you know if I just get one more chance, it's all I need, even though they didn't play well offensively, and they put their defense in bad spots during that game. Uh, brutal loss, but I'm not going to overreact to it. The Vita Vea injury, got to keep our eyes on, and the rest yeah, of that beat up defense. But, uh, but otherwise, I, I think you'll see a motivated Bucks, Bucks team next week. Yeah, Bruce Arians called out the team and said they needed the, the whole defense needed to play with more passion and, and a better approach throughout the week. Uh, he said Devin White was the only guy that brought it. Uh, so that, that was, you know, a big a big statement to the team to say, like, we need to turn this thing around. Like, hopefully this was an eye opener for them. I did forget to mention when we talked about the Atlanta game, Cordero Patterson. It, it appears that it's a high ankle sprain, though it hasn't been confirmed. So we don't know. Okay. for sure. But that could be a big blow to a team that's you know 500 and trying to you know somehow stay yeah. relevant now it's going to be mike davis there for i just uh, wanted to throw that in there as i forgot to mention it uh we'll move on panthers on the road at the cardinals 34 to 10 win for carolina obviously you can't read too much into this pj walker gets the start cam newton comes in scores two touchdowns and uh you know helps inject life we talked about this he energizes the team he injects yeah. life into that locker room and that's just the kind of the command he has as an individual and as a quarterback. So he may will this team to a nine and eight record this year, or, you know, maybe, maybe a 10 and seven somehow. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we can't read too much into it. The Cardinals were without Kyler Murray. They were without DeAndre Hopkins. They yep. didn't have obviously the two guys that mean the most to that franchise. To me, it's clear. Nobody means more to their team really than Aaron Rodgers and Kyler Murray to their respective teams. We've seen Tennessee overcome Derrick well, Henry. Well, okay. We haven't okay. seen Kyler. We haven't. We, I'm not sure the Cardinals can overcome Kyler Kyler Murray being gone, and I'm not sure the Packers can either. 
uh, the rosters outside of those two key players, um, not as intimidating. So that that's I'll, I'll just put you know say that much, and then uh, and then toss it to you for comment. So. Uh, listen, I'm 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 looking back at this game, and one of the things for me that I find is you know, I, I just want to I just want to make sure I say it. I still think the Cardinals deserve a lot of credit for when you lose your starting quarterback for a small stretch, they went one and one, you know what I mean? And they won the one that was yeah. huge against their, if against their divisional opponent in the Niners. So I don't want to be too hard on the Niners in that way. If that, I mean, on the Cardinals in that way, if that makes sense, they obviously ran into a buzz, an emotional buzz saw and the Panthers, like we've talked about throughout the year, they're not bad. Like they're their just, defense they, is really good. The defense they're is not really bad. Good. They just got to stop with the ridiculous turnovers. Yeah. And there was yeah. a lot of turnovers um, from uh, from the, the the Sam Darnold era. I'll McCaffrey, by the way, had ten catches in this one. Like, yeah, you just got to feature vintage, that guy, vintage McCaffrey. And and yeah. I'm excited to watch Cam Newton could be back in Carolina and ride with them the rest of the year. I think I said it on our recording over the weekend. This is the perfect spot for Cam Newton to just now be where he's at, help them try to make the playoffs, re-sign him for another year next year and let him mentor whoever the ne- the rookie that you draft is, the young quarterback you draft. And then let Cam like this is a perfect spot. It was great to watch. It was exciting. I don't know how much longer the momentum can last. And who Carolina's got coming up next week, but it was a good win for them. They stay in the hunt in that in that uh, wild card race. And for Arizona, not going to overreact. They went one and one without their starting quarterback. It's exactly what you need from Colt McCoy. Get us one. Mm-hmm. You lost us one. It's okay. You won the important one, and now we're, we get Kyler back. We'll hopefully get Hopkins back, and uh, they'll 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 be right back in the in the race for the one seed. Yeah, the Cardinals are in a perfectly good position. Panthers have the Washington Dolphins, Falcons the next few weeks. Uh, those are winnable games, and uh, and they can kind of you know try and right the ship, go on a little bit of a run here with Cam, and see if see if that you know passion, that electricity that he brings, uh, will rub off. It, it tends to do that, and uh, I think it was a smart move by them to get him. It's clearly paid off. Vikings at the Chargers. Minnesota gets a twenty-seven twenty win here, Mark, uh, over the Chargers at home um in LA so you know it I don't know like honestly you know the Chargers are five and four like is there concern I think maybe I was a little bit too high on the Chargers because in recent weeks we've really seen Justin Herbert struggle and this offense as a whole kind of not find its rhythm throughout games late you know starting late not not getting off on on the right foot to begin um, and meanwhile, the Vikings, I'm not surprised by the Vikings cause they just do what the Vikings do. They, they're a typical, like they keep, you know, games relatively close and, you know, Kirk cousins is maybe gonna, you know, have one or two big plays that he can hit. Um, but the rest is just kind of mediocre and meh to me, this said more about the chargers and like how much you can trust them to make a run in the playoffs. Well, listen, I, I mean, I'm disappointed in the Chargers. I do think, though, we as a collective sports media world are very ready for the Chargers to be good because Justin Herbert clearly is a, is a future, their, their future. He's a very good quarterback, but he's still young. I mean, he's hitting a little bit of a sophomore slump, and he's got a rookie head coach, and they're in a very tough division, very tough games. And this Vikings team is highly motivated. They know their butts on the line. And anytime the national media isn't paying attention to Kirk Cousins and the Vikings, they play well. This was not America's game of the week. It was not prime time. People's a you know, lost game in the in the middle hour of the of the day when everyone's focused on Packers and, and uh Seahawks. And look what happens. The Vikings go out, they play efficiently. Kirk Cousins plays efficiently, he finds his weapons, he get a win. Chargers, you know, overall, I still think that they are in a in a, a fairly decent spot to make a run for a wild card spot. And the Vikings, they keep, uh, you know, for Zimmer uh, and and for Kirk, they keep their hopes alive of keeping their jobs in the next year right now and and playing for it. So I think it's a lot to it. And Dalvin Cook, I mean, listen, there's a lot of emotion with the Vikings going on right now and that whole story. Not surprising that he comes out has the game that he has. So it's, it's a weird, it was kind of that hidden game that I was, you know, watching the red zone and 
kept showing it because there's a good amount of points to be kept being put up in it. Um, but I, at no point in time do I now feel great about the Vikings to feel terrible about the Chargers. The Chargers are still around where they thought. I had them as being the last wild card team in. They're still in trajectory to be battling for that up and down season, 10 and seven, nine and eight type of thing. Uh, but Justin Herbert, good enough to win most games. He lost at home to a Vikings team that's, it's, I believe, fairly well coached. It has a very good head coach that was highly motivated. Uh, you know, yeah, what, he's, yeah. a, he's a young quarterback with a rookie head coach. That type of stuff happens. Eric Hendricks, by the way, one of the best pass coverage oh, linebackers. Good. He's so good. I, he gets really underrated, I think. I'm, I'm sure you being in the NFC North uh, probably have a little bit more respect for him than than most of the other league. But I, I just feel like he – he goes under the radar a lot. He's really good. He had a pick the, in this game. And he's an athlete. That. He reminds he, me he of really a, he reminds me of like a, of a Bobby Wagner, young Bobby Wagner in that way, the way sure. he covers for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Eagles go on the road. They get a 30 to 13 win over the Broncos. Probably not much to say about this other than the Eagles had, you know, their moments. That's kind of what they are. They, they've got Crazy, some athletes man. on the team. Devontae Smith though. I mean, he's a good oh, Lord. Great. What incredible catches he had in this. Game. He's great. I, so I love good. I love watching him play uh, for the Eagles again. You know, if you're an Eagles fan, I kept thinking to myself at this point in time, you just got to feel like you know what, uh, you you they're they're building wins and 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 it's a roller coaster. Obviously, we know that they are good one week, terrible the next. Good one week, you can bet the Eagles. I don't know who they play next week, but if it's anyone decent, they'll probably get blown out and look really bad. Yeah, exactly. that's just how they are right now. But they're showing you enough to where you say to yourself. Maybe we do run with Hertz and Sirianni for another year and give this guy a full offseason where it goes. Because Jalen Hurts is such a playmaker, man. He's such a playmaker. And he seems he really durable. He, that's the other thing I got to give him credit for right now. He seems very durable uh, at this time. And, why, and, he, and he's cheap as all hell. He's a second-round pick. I mean, you're not paying him anything right now. For the Broncos, what a disappointing loss. I mean, what a disappointing loss. You you have maybe the, one of the upsets of the of the season, and you blow out a, a, a Dallas team, and to lay an egg like that at Mile High, ugh, I mean, that's a bad look for Fangio. It's a bad look for all involved. Your defense has to play better than that. But again, I, it's one of those. This is a Broncos team that I thought this was what they would look like against Dallas. What they would like. This is the direction I thought they were going when they make the Von Miller trade. So when you get that high emotional win. To have such a letdown loss, I think this is now more what we'll see for the Broncos for the rest of the year. And for the Eagles, don't bet them. Just watch, enjoy the roller coaster. It's gonna be good one week. It's gonna be terrible the next week. Uh, and and, uh, and they're 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 all over the map. But Hurts yeah. keeps showing me enough. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it, it's it's fa- he does he's enough. To I mean, fun to yeah, watch. He's doing enough to to stick around. That's kind of the Fangio's doing enough to stick around too. And that's the yeah. thing. It's like. They're five and five. It's not a complete dumpster fire in Denver. But at what point do you say we're not elevating ourselves enough to the next level? That's going to be the tough thing. But for right now, I mean, Fangio hasn't done enough to fire, get himself fired. But at the same time, he's not done enough to really get himself to stick around. It's kind of one of those just middle ground things. And I I think we both like him too. But it's just, man, your defense gave up 30. If they end up nine and eight or eight and nine, I think Fangio stays if a guy yeah. like Aaron Rodgers wants him to stay. If if you can if you get if you start talking in the offseason and your agent saying and Rodgers says, No, no, I like Fangio. I want a defensive coach. I want a guy that I played against him when he was the Bears defensive coordinator. You have some picks. Get me, go out there and get me Odell Beckham Jr. and sign me. I mean, Denver could be in a really good spot at that point in time, you know, if they're able to rehaul like that, because they're a lot like what we were talking about um, with the Panthers. They're not in a rebuild right now. They're a good team that just is mired in like, they need quarterback help kind of like Atlanta right now. They, they just need, a, they're not bad enough to be terrible. They're not Jacksonville. They're not Miami. And they're not, you know, in a lot of those spots, they just are in a weird, weird, weird spot. And, uh, I don't know. I'm very nervous to bet the Broncos and the Eagles the rest of the year. So yeah, it's very funny yeah. that they played this game the way they did. I would stick away from that. Yeah. Meanwhile, they only gave up 23 points because I forgot about the uh, the pick six or the scoop six by Darius. Yeah. But nonetheless, 
Um, Packers shut out the Seahawks at Lambeau predictably. Ooh. I think this was the first snowfall of the season. If I it was, yeah. So and and of course it's at Lambeau Field. Um, but really a sloppy game from both quarterbacks who were returning to their teams. Uh, Russell Wilson, though, you know, had the worst outing as Aaron Rodgers late, able to help drive that team down for some fourth quarter scores. That really put this one out of hand. But seventeen to nothing win for Green Bay. It was a it was an important win for them. Meanwhile, Seattle has now almost in completely shattered their chances of one competing in the NFC West, but that was yeah. almost already outside of the box. But now even really competing for a wild card spot, they're three and six now, and uh, and it doesn't really get much rosier for them moving forward. So yeah, tough spot for them in Russell's return. Russell looked really bad, and um, you know the, it's the the first time in his career as a starting quarterback they didn't score a point. So that goes to say something about how bad it was. It was it was uncharacteristically bad for for Russell Wilson. I will say this: it's also the first time he's ever had an injury to miss time and come back from it. So, mm-hmm. you know, I said on my and Saturday he came morning, back super early. Yeah, I said on my Saturday morning show, th- this is this is just a bad spot for Seattle. For Green Bay, I thought, again, what Green Bay showed when they missed their quarterback last week and how tightly they played the Chiefs, I think you're starting to realize, too, this Green Bay team, this defense has some real teeth. And if you're Aaron Rodgers at this point in time and you're the Packers, I, I there's there's no me saying, well, Aaron doesn't have enough help. This team is this is a good team. It's a, it's a, this is a, is a very well-rounded team. And that defense played really, really well. They get Bakhtiari back. All these things are coming into oh, yeah form with with the Packers um well I'll say this you're absolutely right for the Seahawks because you got to train your brains here now we keep saying to ourselves oh it's a longer season 17 games 17 games but if you are as soon as you get your sixth loss you basically got to say to yourself we can only lose one more game and when you can only lose one more game and you have seven games to go yeah that's a tough, you're asking, you're now asking you and your team to go into basically a six and one run. You got to win three, lose one, win three. I mean, you, you've got to find a way to only lose one game over seven games. That's tough. And, and they have the Cardinals twice, even 10, 10 games is not gar- And that's, that's to get to 10 wins. That's not guaranteeing that you're getting in. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. if your team is at the six loss mark or the seven loss mark or the five loss mark, that's what you have to be thinking right now. You're allowed two losses if you're five, one if you're a six, and none if you're a seven or worse. You've got to you've got to win out to have a chance to really put yourself in that wild card spot. So that's how you can start separating teams. And Seattle's in that spot deep right now. Yeah, they're they're in a really tough. I, I also think honestly, this is kind of the perfect storm, and not that it's indicative of the struggles of the C- Seahawks, but I think the outcome of them potentially missing the playoffs this year is going to be the catalyst for Russell to eventually leave Seattle. I, I truly believe gotta, that. And it's him or Pete. I think it's getting to that point. Yeah, it, it really is. And honestly, it should be Pete, but Seattle may do the wrong move and, and, and move off of, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, it's too early to talk about, I'm sure we'll have more off season stuff, but yeah, it seems to be trending in that direction and, and likely they're not going to make the playoffs. So that, that's just where we sit right now. Finally, Sunday night football chiefs at the Raiders Raiders were set up for possibly a moment here to really, you know, put the hammer down in the AFC West. Um, but the chiefs finally had that game. We've been waiting for, for the better part of yeah. about six weeks, Mark, for that offense to finally come through. And uh, Patrick Mahomes gets his 400 yard, five touchdown performance hits all sorts of people, uh, you know, including an incredible play vintage play of, of Patrick Mahomes rolling, right. And, uh, hits Dame or Daryl Williams, the running back on a yep. contested catch in the end zone. It's like, yeah, this is just the chiefs night at that point. You know, I thought the crucial moment of the game was, I think the chiefs were up by like 10 and it was the the Raiders got a stop and it was uh, the third down stop. And they, you know, fourth down, the chiefs go to punt. And they do the fake. Mm-hmm. The Chiefs convert Which, the, the fake. punter on a dime, and by a the nice, way. What a nice throw, throw by the punter. The <laughs> Chiefs convert the fake, and then Patrick Holmes almost throws an INT like the next play, and that should have been picked off. It was dropped. Yeah. He leads him on a touchdown drive, and all of a sudden now it's like the floodgates completely open after that. And, you know, Derek Carr, a lot of people making fun of Derek Carr with the memes of just chucking it up this morning. You're seeing it on Twitter and stuff. 
Listen, he is, uh, He's in a world. Uh, Deshaun Jackson is, you know, did not so far been a disaster what, of a pickup. What happened there? I think he tried to do a juke move and le- yeah. just left the football. But you know, he could have caught the ball and kept running. And well, I, I feel like that would have been a touchdown. Tackled. He would have gotten tackled. I think he Maybe. knew that too. And he's trying to avoid contact, especially this age of his career. Deshaun's always been a guy who just doesn't really care. He wants to make plays. So it wasn't shocking to happen, but it was bad. It was really embarrassing and yeah. bad. And I think you're starting to see now the wheels falling off for a Raiders team that now is feeling undercoached. Uh, and and they're just feeling the emotion of everything they've gone through this season, I think, is just really getting to them. Uh, it showed in the Giants loss, and it showed in then getting blown out at home to a divisional opponent who you're supposed to know your divisional opponents. And uh, they just couldn't keep it close in the second half at all, especially after that fake punt. But for the Chiefs, again, I feel good about the Chiefs right now, but this is one of those. I don't want to get fooled. Like I, I'm, I'm not fully back on the Chiefs bandwagon. They're not in the first. They're not in first class. You got to. They. I need to see a little bit more consistency. They. They're that boyfriend that screwed up big time. They didn't cheat on me, but they were caught like liking an Instagram photo, and it's like, hey, just because you bought me flowers <laughs> this week and really good, I need a couple more. Uh, you know, weeks of you being back to where you were. Rebuild so, you know, that trust. Yeah, rebuild that trust with Kansas City. But listen, Mahomes is my fantasy quarterback, and uh, that was lovely last night, so I'll take that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll absolutely take that. Uh, you know, meanwhile, um, Daniel Sorensen got himself an interception, the guy who yeah. has had such a rough year. He's had uh, a bad gets year. An interception. Good for him. Yeah, happy for him. But um, let's get that update on your Super Bowl plane then. You kind of alluded to it there. Uh, so let's, let's see who's moved and who's stayed stagnant here on that plane. So, I mean, we didn't do one last week, but I'll just say last week, um, from last week to this week, I've really thinned down first class. Um, I did one last week, and we just didn't get, we just didn't get to it, but that's okay. It'll be lost in the annals of history. So we were, last week, had a, we arrived in Detroit the last time we, we did this, and uh, we, we took off from Cleveland last week. So we're in Cleveland. We're on our way to Indianapolis. Real quick flight, just a transfer flight. And, um, and Dan, you know, when we do this as a reminder, first class as teams right now, I feel confident saying they could win the Super Bowl. Business class are teams that they could win a playoff game uh, or two, and it would not shock me. And standby is teams that I think should make the playoffs. And, um, and But I don't feel confident about them necessarily doing anything right now in the playoffs. So first class is the Titans, the Packers, the Rams, and the Bucks. So... I feel right now in the AFC, the Titans are the only team right now. I feel hundred percent confident that I could say that AFC team could win, could win the Super Bowl. They're winning games in blocks. They're winning games ugly. They're on a high right now. And, uh, and I still don't even think they're playing their best football, which is really, really fascinating mm-hmm. uh, for the Packers, the Rams and the Bucks. Listen, the Rams play tonight. So we don't know what's going to happen to them, but all three of those teams, even though the Bucks in a loss, have an immense amount of talent. They have the quarterbacks and they are all teams with, I think a lot of experience and coaches uh, that uh, when they get to the playoffs, will, I feel confident about them winning game, multiple games in the playoffs and playing big in a big moment in the Super Bowl. business class. I moved Dallas down mainly because that was such a bad loss to the Broncos that even though it was a really good win, I just felt like I needed to take a breath on Dallas and, and move them down a spot. Uh, and the same with the bills. They had such a bad loss for the Jags, even though it was such a good win Dallas and the, Dallas and the bills are the AFC and NFC teams that are like equal to each other right now. They're very close to being right back into first class, but I just needed to take the breath, let a week or two settle and see what they are in another week. Uh, the chiefs, Cardinals, Patriots, Cardinals only because I don't exactly know what the health of Kyla Murray and, and Hopkins is going to be. They keep saying it's, oh, things are progressing. But without those guys been 100%, they are not a Super Bowl team at all. So I, that the Cardinals is more of an injury thing. And then a surprise team, I, the Chiefs, obviously, they've earned their way back into this business class. The reason they're not in first class right now, as I just said, I just can't trust them 100% yet. Their defense played well, offense played well. When their defense and offense play like that, they, of course, their Super Bowl team. Can they now do it two or three weeks in a row and be back to the Chiefs of old? 
And the other team in the business class is the Patriots. Right now, I can see the Patriots making the playoffs and winning a game or two in the playoffs, and it would not shock me. A lot of it depends on Mac Jones. Finally, stand by teams, all AFC teams, teams I think should be playoff teams, but right now, I just don't trust them. Ravens, Chargers, Bengals. They're all about the same to me right now. The Ravens are the, the, the class of that class because they have the MVP. They have Lamar Jackson, and, and he's special. Burrow and Herbert are, are great players, they're great young players, but uh, they're not Lamar special at this point in their careers right now. So that is the that is the plain uh, top-heavy NFC, bottom-heavy AFC. And uh, and, it, and honestly, if you're in the AFC, and if you're in the NFC and you're not Dallas, Cowboys, uh, sorry, Cowboys, Bucks, Rams, Packers, I don't know how much I trust you that much until Arizona shows to me they're healthy. Yeah. The, the one thing I'll say is with the Ravens, you know, it might be the controversial um, pick on my part. I just, I still feel quite confident in Baltimore. I think they're going to end up winning the North. I think that's a team that can still contend for the Super Bowl. That I, I'm not going to lie. Their secondary is concerning at this point, And it was a yes. strength coming into the year or ahead of the year. Now it's, now it's a, a liability of sorts. And th- that is concerning. Um, I just I still view them as a division winner, a team that will win a playoff game. I could see them in the championship, uh, whether or not they get over the hump to the Super Bowl yet to be seen. But um, I'm I'm pretty high on them. I still so that would be the one objection I'd say I'd probably want to put them closer in business to class. business class, you know, than than anything. Else. I'll but say this: I, I, probably, I get it though. I probably screwed myself with the Ravens. I should have put them in first class because they play the Bears this week. That way, if the Bears <laughs> upset them, I'll yeah. say, like, the Bears are back. They just upset a first-class team. Or if the Bears get blown out, more likely to happen, especially coming off that bad loss to Miami. And they're, they're even though the Bears are on a bye week, the Ravens have a pseudo-bye because they played Thursday. And I think the game is in Baltimore, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if the Bears get blown out, then I can be like, well, they're a first-class team. I mean, the Bears, you know, losing to a to a first-class team. You know, right, yeah, no big deal. So I've screwed yeah, myself yeah. here a little bit here. but uh, actually in Chicago, so there Oh, hey, oh, they got a chance. Ooh. Bears got a chance. I have there integrity. I have integrity. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, real quick, I think the Rams take care of business at the 49ers tonight. The 49ers are just oh. reeling at this point. Um, but obviously, they could come out and, and have a game that, you know, is vintage San Fran with Kyle Shanahan at some point. Uh, I just feel Rams, OBJ, uh, a lot of the stuff. Yeah, I just feel like they're going to come out prepared and ready to go. So they're three and a half point favorites. Yeah, only thing that concerns me is uh, Shanahan's resume versus McVay. I think he has a winning record versus McVay in division. That is a big deal. uh, But I do think Matthew Stafford is a difference maker now for Sean McVay in these matchups. So. I will also say the Rams. I think it's close, though. I don't think it's a blowout. I think the over could be in trouble in this game. I think it's a little bit more of a slugfest, more methodical drives. I think it's a San Francisco team that knows they can. This is a can't lose for San Francisco. I think they already have six losses or five losses. They are three and five. Yep, three and five. So again, they're in that they're in that bubble now. They're only allowed two more losses. If they want to be a wild card playoff team, if this is going to be one, I I mean, they, they, they're a, this is a hungry dog type of situation, but the Rams are equally as motivated for that one seed. They're on opposite ends of the spectrum. I'll take the Rams. I think it's the lo- it's more of a slugfest and slightly lower scoring. Interesting tidbit. Rams are four and O on the road and 49ers oh. are Oh, and four at home. So oh, the, oh, that's, that's even, uh, that's weird, but I, I, it is Those weird. Are, it will some something's got to give, right? I, I mean, feel uh, Lewis Riddick bringing that set up early in the game on the Monday night broadcast, and then the you know, and then the Niners crush the Rams, yeah. and you're like, oh, see that stat? Yeah, exactly. That's that's uh, just bound to happen at that point. But all right, well, that has been our our week ten recap. Um, we are going to be off next week. It is our yes. bye week next week. Uh, we've got a lot going on. Uh, so we're busy guys. We're, we're busy. We got things that we have to attend to. So, and, uh, and if you're saying we'll just record another day it, with the reason we record on Mondays, not only because it's a recap of, it's, of like, it's like our only, <laughs> we our schedules are very different. So this yeah, is a, this yeah. is the time, but um, no, I, I have a big performance going on uh, at the theater. And uh, so it's a, it's a vocal rest day and, and Dan's got some work stuff going on. So we will, uh, we'll yeah. be off. And my laptop's week. like essentially broken. So uh, yeah, we'll yeah. just, 
We'll get everything. We'll have a brand new laptop. We'll do social go. media stuff. We'll get out our yeah. picks. We'll, we'll we'll give some reactions and stuff. But uh, as far as a full episode, we'll be back. Uh, looks like then the 29th. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Enjoy. Yes. Enjoy the Turkey Day games and stuff. Um, you know, maybe we'll, we'll say, see if we can get something out there. But As Boomer would say, let me be the first to wish everyone a happy <laughs> yes, <that's> right. <laughs> And so she that, does a good job right there. That means the Bears will be playing twice between the time now we record next. Oh so. man. So we may have we uh, may have a, a yeah. chunk to talk yeah. about. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, yes. Oh god. Right. Ravens and Lions. Hey, but no hot week, so no take hot the win. Week. Yeah, I will. Yeah, for sure. All right. See you everyone and uh and have a good Thanksgiving. We'll we'll catch you at the end of the month.